Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at creating, or at least attempting to create, an isometric view, like getting that true 30, 45 degree angle. And by that, it's going to be pretty close. And I'll get to exactly why it's close and not 100% accurate in just a second. But if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. It tells me that you did learn something or that you at least like the video. And this is the last week, please, guys. I am hoping to have the opportunity to present a, you know, a way of bringing twin motion to your firm at Autodesk University. So I need your help. If you go down into the description, click that link and then upvote that class. That will give me a great chance, a better chance, at actually giving that class. And you'll benefit a lot by by the amount of videos I'm going to have to do for that and the the depth that I'm going to go to to produce what I hope to be a quality class. So. All right, let's get into it now. We're we're looking to create an isometric view, and if you're familiar with what that is, it's a typical you know kind of 45 degree angle, and you know it's gonna be hard for me to get this you know kind of accurate, but it's it's kind of kind of something like this. So really, this is going to end up being a pretty simple video. But at this point, what are we? How are we going to achieve this? Well, we're actually going to cheat a little bit, and by cheating, we're going to end up using this camera align tool, one of the most undervalued tools in all of twin motion because of what it allows you to do it allows you to literally align exactly to a particular face that you want to align to and that has a lot of implications because you can literally determine the exact view you're looking at and that is 100 percent accurate now what isn't exactly 100 percent accurate is that at the end of the day like i've said before in many videos my big one of my biggest knocks on twin motion is that we don't have orthographic views that we could use and export at render like fully rendered quality and you know what you're looking at now is essentially uh, fully rendered quality this is kind of what we'd get of course we exported we get it looking a little bit better i have more effects and whatever but you know if i come over here and i go to this custom view here you know we have this orthographic view and it is just disgusting. I've gone over this a lot, and it's one big knock. So hopefully one day they'll get rid of these dark black lines, and we can keep this kind of a, a view orientation with a fully rendered view. Like basically getting that to be possible would be awesome. So given all of that and the fact that we need to use this real basic I mean, perspective view if we want to achieve, of course, the highest rendered quality, what are we going to have to do? Well... Again, we're going to cheat using this camera align tool, but we need to, uh, of course, align to something. Well, I mean, we, we can start to pick anything. If I pick this face, it, you know, you can see as I pick different faces, it's going to end up moving the camera and align to that particular face, which is can be really helpful. And I have another video on that in particular. It, it is really helpful. But we're going to take this to the next level because we want to get that kind of 45, kind of axonometric, isometric view. And so we're going to cheat a little bit. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to come over here, and I have... All these primitives, just pick one that is a, a cube or something with a flat face. That's what we're after. So I'm going to drop this box in, and it doesn't matter because we're ultimately not going to end up rendering this box. Like, I don't want to render the box. But we're going to use the box to align. And so, okay, this is going to allow us to get the exact angle that we're looking for. So in this case, we are looking for a particular angle, and maybe that's 30 degrees, maybe it's 40, maybe it's anywhere in between 0 and 90. It's up to you. But for a proper axonometric isometric view we're probably more used to 45 degrees so literally i'm going to change this to 45 degrees and you can see what's about to happen here i i have now this cube which is sitting here at angled at 45 degrees and again it does not matter where it is at all well i'll get into that in just a second it does matter but at the same time it doesn't so we're going to say okay this is good so the second i use this camera line on this face boom look at this we have I'm going to not call it a perfect because I'll get to that in just a second, but it is a near perfect axonometric and isometric view. Like, look at this. This is this is what we're after, generally speaking. So here, where's the issue? Well, the issue is, of course, I'm still in perspective. And you know that you're in perspective. If, if I end up panning over, I can see, well, I can actually end up seeing the side of that cube. That tells you everything. If there's this kind of dimension, you're in a perspective view. Whereas if we were in an orthographic view and I align to this, cube if i were to move i would still only see that face it would literally just be panning the view so that's kind of what we're stuck with and not to say that's the end of the world because i'm pretty pretty close to what we're after as far as getting that proper axonometric view 
So this now the thing to be aware of is if I were to align this, the second I end up like right clicking and panning or whatever, I have lost that view. Now, of course, if I start moving back or what, yeah, I like again, I've lost that camera alignment. So make sure that whenever you do align, so like I'm aligned right now, but let's say my, you know, I haven't properly framed my building, my whole building, whatever it is in the entire shot. So what are we going to do? Well, the only thing that I can do really is move left and right. Okay. And so if I move left and right, of course, I'm just panning left and right. Now, of course, if I hit W and S, like the liberty to move forward and back, I'm going to lose that. Now, it's hard to tell because, you know, it doesn't look like it, um, but I, I do begin to lose that. So that's fine. But the thing that I'm going to say whenever you're trying to determine where, how you, how to frame it is get, get back to where you want to go, like kind of essentially see everything you want to see and basically from a zoomed in or out, so basically zoom in or out to where you need to be, then align because the alignment is going to keep that zoom in or out. And then of course I need to, maybe I want to zoom out a little more and then I can realign. So now I can see the whole building. Now what thing, of course we can do, we can move left and right with A and D or however you're using the navigation. But here's the cool part. I can actually hold down the middle mouse button and just pan around like this. So this might be the most powerful way of determining that. So Again, I've, I'm still in perspective, but I'm staying on that plane that I have aligned to, which is really helpful because, you know, if I come over here, all it's going to do is just move me back. If I come over here, it's just going to move me back. I'm not literally moving in depth, which is allowing me to keep this, which is, is really great. So, uh, you know, I want to zoom in here. I see the full building, and maybe I want to, like, yeah, you know, that's great. And so, really, at this point, <laughs> all I'm going to do is simply come over here and then hide my cube, like, boom, it's done. I've done everything that I needed to do to achieve that effect, which is really cool. You know, it's simple for what it is. Again, it's not perfect, but it's, it's getting there. It's getting us pretty close to what we might want. Now, the final thing I want to say is if I were to show this cube again and I start to align to it again, you can see kind of where we're ending up. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to come over here and just move this and you're going to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to move this, let's move it back here. And so if I camera align there, you know, not much is going to happen, but I want you to pay attention to like the amount, or, like I guess the the distance that we see, the amount that we see of this vertical face as I move this throughout. So if I move this here and then we realign, now I can I, I'm, I am getting a different perspective of this vertical face of this round piece, and, and that's kind of just kind of what we're stuck with. So really. The, the purpose of where this cube ends up being placed is kind of where you want to focus on what's, I mean, I would say the center, but and again, this is going to be harder and more noticeable when you have larger sites. If you have just something tiny, like tiny, then you can put this like dead in the center and then end up aligning to it. And you're going to be pretty great. Like when it comes, like if we, if we just want to focus on this piece here in the center and I align to that, I mean, I am, I mean, that's pretty close. If I zoom out enough, like, yeah, I'm seeing what I need to see here at a, essentially a 45 degree. So, you know, again, just know this is not going to be perfect. It's not meant to be perfect. It's not meant to create an actual axonometric view. But all I'm saying for this video is that you are able to get that sort of effect, that look. And if you have a smaller site or a smaller building, whatever it is, it, it's even better. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Really, if you did happen to learn something, which I really hope you did, it was simple, but I did hope you learned something still, please demolish that like button. It helps me and tells me that you might have learned something. Also, please, again, I'll say it once more, that Autodesk University class, please go down in the description, click that link, log in with your ID, and please upvote that class if you like my Twin Motion videos at all and they've, got, they've brought you any value in the past. I really hope they have. So please do that for me. That would really mean a whole lot to me. I would mean so much. And I, Thank you all who have. Thank you for all who spend the time to watch my videos, ask questions, whatnot. I really appreciate all of that, all the viewership that I have. But again, that will do it for this video. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one.